hi everyone welcome back to another DIY tutorial I'm super excited I'm um, going to get this chance to show you how I made this dress I, I made a short video of it I post on a YouTube short and a few of you request for a tutorial and so I said okay let me make the tutorial so yes that is what we're going to do today so if you're new to my channel you are welcome my name is Julia Rag, and if you're my returning subscriber guys you are also welcome thank you so much for coming back I'm going to shed some light about the fabric you need to use to create this dress and fabric you don't need to use. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to talk about the fabric you don't need to use. First fabric that you don't need to use is Ankara. And you can try it, see if how it turns out. But to be honest with you, you are not going to get this kind of feeling you're seeing on the screen. Okay, it's not going to look like this. And the uh, second fabric you don't need to use is... Um, duchess that structural one the one you're seeing i use it and this is the result i don't like it so it's no and um the third fabric the max if you insist you want to try it you can try it but i would recommend you not to use it that is three fabric and then the last is the crepe and if you if you want to use crepe you must not be the strong one it, ha it has it has to be soft okay so don't use strong crepe i think that is all i can think of right now any strong fabric that doesn't have a a stretchy or flow kind of feel is no so now the fabric that you will need to use to probably get something like this first number one is chiffon you can use chiffon Chiffon is going to give you that feel, it's going to give you the flawless and um, the drips. Yes, it's going to be there, of course. And then the second fabric, I mentioned crepe that you should not use crepe. And I told you the reason why you should not use crepe, the particular crepe. The crepe I would recommend for you is lightweight crepe, okay? Where it has to be light and stretchy. So you need to use that one. And the second fabric I would recommend for you is Duchess. There are two types of duchess that I have seen. No? The one, one is this particular one that you see that I use. It did not flow. But this is the second one that I use. And this is the second one that I use that you guys requested for. This is duchess. I use duchess. And then number four is uh, silk. 100% recommended silk. Because silk is going to give you the flawless and it's going to give you that rich, silky rich anti-vibe kind of look luxury kind of look yes silk is recommended 100 percent so if you if you want to make this dress you need to go for this four fabric that i have mentioned and if you still want to try out to see how it's going to turn out when using another fabric then you can use all this one that has i said that you should not use so it's going to be your own choice okay so um and uh, how many yards you need to use to make this dress in generally if you're making the pants and the gown you will need five yards to six yards it depends your body size i'm on a small size four and a half yard or five years is going to be enough for me to make the complete outfit it depends how big you want your trouser to be if you want your trouser to be big then you're going to make it uh you're going to get five yards but if you want a fitted pant with a um with a a fuller dress on top then four and a half year it should be enough for you for a small size so from size size 14 above i will recommend you to use six yard okay six yard should be more than enough for you to make this outfit so i hope uh you understand you get what i mean and i hope all this explanation is clear and one more thing you need bias matching uh, matching color so that you can fold in the the front okay like you're seeing on your screen but the one i use is not the same color i didn't have any color that match with it so i just because of the tutorial i just have to go ahead to use it so for my tutorial what i use on this tutorial is uh um, what is it called again brighter satin so i chose to use brighter satin because i want to be able to explain to you i want to be able to show you without the fabric running around without me being pinning or stuff like that so that is why 
I'm using this bridal satin. Original, if I'm going to make it for myself or for a client, I'm going to be using this four fabric that I mentioned within, within any of this, okay? So we are going to go into the tutorial right now and get your fabric of your choice and let's go into it. Okay guys, so we are going to get started now. I have two color of uh, chalk here. So I will choose which one that is more brighter on the fabric and also visible for you to see, okay, to use. And I have my table here. I have my fabric scissors also. So lastly, I have my fabric that I'm going to use. So like I said earlier, I'm going to be using uh, brighter satin. And the reason why I'm choosing brighter satin because I'm doing a tutorial for you guys. So if I choose to use the original material that I need to use, I may not be able to enjoy the stitching and also the fabric is going to be moving around i will be struggling to pin and the chalk may not come out boldly for you to see where i'm marking so i have three yards of uh, fabric here like i said earlier i'm using three yards for the chalk and also i have gone ahead to cut it out i have cut the front and the back pattern together so right now i'm trimming off the rough edges yeah, I have to trim it off. So yes, I have my two pieces together now, the front and the back, and it's on fold, okay? So this is the front and this is the back, all right? All of them are on fold. So the next thing I'm going to start, so how many inches that I used to cut out the width of the fabric is 18.5. For the bigger size, you can use 20 or 21 inches. And the length I have here, is by 60 okay the length of this dress is going to be by 60 so the next thing i'm going to do i'm going to start by creating my shoulder line so here is going to become my shoulder and then the next measurement i will be taking now is my vertical measurement that is from my shoulder to my chest line from my chest line to my hip line so we have three measurements that we need to take so for my chest line, I'm going to add 0 0.75 to my original chest line. I have 18.25, but I'm going to be adding 0 0.25 here, uh, 0 0.75 to make it out of 9 inches. So from my shoulder to my chest line is going to be 9 inches. I'm adding additional ease allowance here because it's a free shirt, okay? It's a free dress rather. So this is my chest line that I just marked now. So I marked the line twice so that I can have a straight line connecting my chest line. So the next measurement I'm going to be taking is my uh, hip line. So like I said, you don't need shaping this dress, okay? You're just going to, the only measurement you need to take here is the hip line. And why we need the hip line is because so the cut at we need to cut out from the from the front okay so the hip liner is going to be as a guideline to show you where you need to cut out the front and what you need to do at the end of the day okay to know exactly line where to cut out the, the like do the cut out i hope you understand this so now that i'm done with the vertical measurement we're going to move on to the horizontal measurement okay the horizontal measurement is the one you take your round body a circumference okay so move on to the shoulder line i'm going to be marking my shoulder so my shoulder is 14 divided by 2 is 7 and then i'm going to add one inch to it for its allowance so that's making it so i'm going to move on to my chest line i'm going to mark the eight inches there so that i can have a straight line connecting my armhole line okay So here is my armhole line and uh, still on the shoulder line here i'm going to be marking my neck width so i'm going to be using the neck width of 2.5 inches because this is a high uh, or total neck total neck line so my neck depth for the front is going to be also 2.5 inches okay and um, the next thing i'm going to do i need to mark the back neck depth also my back neck depth is one inch so here is my one inch for my back neck depth. So the next thing I'm going to do now, I'm going to connect my neckline using my French curve rule. So here is my neck 
So now that I'm done connecting my neckline, the next thing I'm going to mark my shoulder slope. I'm going to be marking 0.75 for my shoulder slope. So I'm taking so much uh, uh, inch away for shoulder slope because it's also a free dress, okay? So that is, that is why I'm marking 0.75. So I'm going to confirm it to be sure I have 0.75, okay? So I will get my French or my ruler to connect it with a straight line, okay? So afterward, I'm going to find the midpoint between here and here, all right? So to find the midpoint, I have here 7.75, and then I'm going to fold it into two so that I can get the midpoint of this uh, armhole line, okay? So I have almost four inches, so I'm going to mark it there. So I'm going to mark it now, and I'm going to mark it inward with a bit of a 0 .7, uh, 0 0.5 inch here, you can see, right? So to connect my armhole curve, I need to mark my quarter of my bust circumference, which is 8.5, okay? So I'm going to add a, uh, a width of... Uh, I'm going to add 2.5 inches for ease allowance and also for sewing allowance, okay? So I'm going to be using 0 0.75 for my sewing allowance, so yeah. So the next thing, the total I have here is 11 inches. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to get my French curve row and connect my armhole curve. So my armhole curve is ready from the chest line is ready so the next thing i'm going to do i'm going to use my french curve to connect my to start connecting this side okay so you can just watch and see what i'm doing if you have the same french curve like i have you can use it and use exactly the curve that i use but if you don't have you can use your free hand to achieve this uh, shape okay so afterwards i'm going to get my long steel ruler so that I can use it to connect it all the way from the hemming line to my hip line, okay? So just watch and see. I'm connecting it in form of A-line shape, okay? So that is what I did to, the, to this part. So basically, I'm done drafting all the pattern for the back and the front. So the only additional thing that we need to do now is to cut out the neckline, add the shoulder joining, that is 0 0.5 inch for the shoulder joining and then also i will cut out the front design that is the front opening okay so what i'm doing right now i'm adding 0 0.5 inch for my joining allowance 0 0.5 inch from the armhole so that i can use it to join my sleeves together okay so for this tutorial i'm not going to show how to make the sleeve in my next tutorial i'm going to show you how i i cut out the sleeve and how i join it to my bodies okay so what I'm doing right now, I'm going to start by cutting out the back pattern first before I will take out the front, all right? So now that I'm done cutting out the, the part that I don't need, and uh, I'm going to separate the front and the back so that I can work on the front. You know, the cut out for the front, I need to cut the front off. Then afterward, then we start joining our pieces together, okay? So I'm going to spread my front. This is the front, okay? And remember to cut out the neck width of the, the neck depth of the front, okay? So move on to the hip line here. I'm going to mark four inches down for the cut out. I did mistake here, or rather it's not a mistake, it's my personal preference. If you want your cut out to be lower than your hip line, then leave it at this four inches that I did, or maybe even lower than this one, or higher than this one. So this one is a personal preference, okay? So I mark four inches below, but I later change it afterwards. So I'm marking five inches inward so that I can create out the cut out. So afterward, I'm going to uh, draw a straight line to know this is the part where I'm working with. And uh, at first, I wanted to go in using my French curve, but it was not giving me the shape I was looking for. So I leave, I stop, and I use my free hand. But still, it was still a bit difficult. So move back to the hemming part here for the bottom part. 
I'm going to be marking uh, 5 inches, but I later change it, I mark 4 inches. I didn't use 5 inches anymore, I used 4 inches because I don't want this part to be wider. I want it to be a little bit narrow, okay? So I later reduce it to 4 inches. And remember, my sewing allowance is going to be 0 0.75 from this side, okay? So um, afterward, I'm using my free hand now to connect the line. Uh, still on still the... I did not get that shape that I was looking for. It was later when I was cutting it that I later got the shape I was actually looking for. So you have to try as much as you can for you to get the shape you are looking for, okay? At this point. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to start by cutting it. At, and please, please watch carefully to see the line that I'm cutting. I did not cut out exactly where I drew out the lines, okay? So watch and see. So this is how I later got the shape that I wanted for this uh, dress at the end of the day, okay? So now that we're done from here, I'm going to trim up my uh, neck depth. So I forgot, but I later did that at the end of the day. So now move back to the, uh, to the back. I'm trimming off this rough edges from the hemming part. And then I, I got the pieces that is on fold, okay? So that I can cut out the facing, the back facing. You know, the bag has a opening, okay, so that your hair can go through. You need to cut out the bag so that your hair can go through. So, and uh, I'm going to use facing on this, okay. I'm going to use facing to uh, pipe in it the bag, right? So, make sure you arrange it and then you're going to trace the neckline to the facing. Trace it all the way to the shoulder, the width of the shoulder, so that... I will show you what you need to do with this part, okay? So make sure you trace your facing all the way to the end of the shoulder, okay? And the total length I'm going to use to open my back uh, neck uh, depth, rather, is going to be uh, 6.5 inches, okay? So I'm going to transfer this measurement to the facing as well. So the next thing I will do now, I need to mark 10 inches below. So I marked 9.5 inches here. But I will advise you to mark 10 inches because when you when you cut at uh, 6.5 inches, the remaining space that's going to left is going to be 3.5, okay? So I will advise you to cut uh, 10 inches. So afterward, I'm going to connect it just that way you see me like doing so I cut it out. So here is my facing, all right? So I'm going to get my back, uh, uh, my main fabric now so that I can start cutting out. I will cut it open. I will cut it all the way to the point where I marked that uh, 6.5, okay? So if you cannot cut it out the way I, I wanted to cut at first, open it this way so that you can be able to see the part where you are cutting out clearly, okay? So I'm going to stop it right here. And the same thing goes to the facing. I'm also going to cut it all the way. I'm going to stop it right here, okay? So basically, this is my facing. And then the next thing now, I'm going to place the facing right side facing the right side of my back and then i'm going to pin it so i can go back to my sewing machine to join my facing to my back all uh, together okay So now that I'm done peeling this part, I'm going to go and sew it with 0.25, okay? I'm going to go to my sewing machine and sew it with 0.25 allowance, okay? So, yeah. So I have gone ahead to stitch it off camera. So uh, stitch it with 0.25. And the next thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to notch this middle part here so that when I flip it over, it's going to relax over this point, okay? Make sure you notch it and don't over notch it so you will not go and cut the main piece open, okay? And the next thing you're going to do, you need to uh, open it, spread it open and iron it so that when you flip it open, it's going to relax, okay? So I have done iron. So the next thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to get my front part, uh, my front pieces, and then the back pieces also. The right side facing the right side. That is what I'm going to do so that I can go to the sewing machine to join the shoulder. 
So now remember when I told you that you should cut the facing to the width of your shoulder measurement, right? So you're going to use this facing now to turn in the rough edges inside, okay? So you're going to place it, okay, the right side facing the right side. First of all, take the, the main fabric, uh, the back and the front shoulder line, and then the facing is going to be uh, behind. So the back is going, to, the front is going to be between, and the back is going to be outside, and the facing is going to be behind, okay? I don't know if you understand this. Please watch if you don't understand my explanation. This is the, the, the facing, okay? So this is the facing and the back pattern. So I'm opening the facing. Now this is the facing and this one, this is the facing. I'm going to turn it to the back behind. So the, the front uh, shoulder, uh, shoulder now is in between. Okay, the front shoulder is in between. So the back shoulder is at the front and the lining is at the back. So the shoulder, the front shoulder is in between. So you're going to make sure you match the the tip together okay make sure the tip are together and then you're going to pin it like you see me doing okay you're repeating the same thing to the other side of the shoulder and then afterward we're going to head back to the sewing machine so i'm going to repeat the same thing here okay i hope you understand the explanation so once i'm done pinning i'm going to go back to my sewing machine so that we can join the shoulder together So now that I'm done pinning, so we are going to go to the sewing machine now to join it with 0 0.5 inch allowance, okay? So whatever thing I do to the other side, I will do to the other side of the shoulder. So right now, I'm on the sewing machine now. I'm going to start now by joining the shoulder together. All right, let me turn it out so that you see the outcome. So this is how it looks like. So let's head back to the cutting table. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to, uh, let me bring it out so that I can start notching this part. Okay, you need to notch them. Okay, make sure you notch them and iron it so that it's going to relax. Because if you did not notch it and also if you did not iron it, it's not going to relax when you turn it to the right side. Okay, so now I'm going to iron it so that I can so that we can move on to something else, okay? So now that I'm done ironing, so this is how it's looking like. Even the fact that even iron is still looking a little bit, <laughs> a little bit thick, but still it's okay now because I have given it enough press. So the next thing I'm going to do, if you have a overlocking machine, you can overlock. If you don't have, then you can just Put in like you see me doing okay and then use your hemming gun place it underneath and iron but i have overlocking machine so i'm going to go now and overlock mine so i'm going to before i overlock it i'm going to take the round circumference of my sleeves so yeah this is what you need to do but i'm not showing you how i cut out my sleeve and how i join it it's going to be on the next tutorial okay so i have 10 inches here that is the my round uh armhole circumference times two is 20 so i'm going to use that to be cutting out my sleeve so and then i'll go and weave all this part here so i have done with it i weave all the side the side joining but i didn't weave the hemming part yet so this is the facing you see what i did i overlock it together with the hemming gum so that it can be easy for me to uh, iron when i'm going to seal it down okay so the next thing that I'm just going to iron it, as you can see, it's really easy. When you overlock uh, the rough edges together with the hemming gum, it's easy for you to work with. So here I have also gone ahead to join my sleeves. And um, yeah, the next thing I'm going to do now is to, is to start joining the side, okay? So... Just be patient. I'm going to show you how I join my sleeve in my next video, okay? So the next thing I will just match the side joining from that armhole, okay? Make sure you uh, you you match it together. Let it fit in together, okay? The stitching 
I don't know how to the joining. Let the joining be together so that it will look uh, equal when by the time you're done stitching it. Okay, I'm going to pin it and then I will head back to my sewing machine to join it together. We are going to do that together. Okay, we are doing that together. So after I finish pinning, we are going to head back to the sewing machine. I'm going to join it with 0 0.75. Remember, we are going to join this with 0 0.75. Remember when I was, we are drafting the bodies, I told you that my joining allowance is going to be 0 0.75. Yeah, so I'm going to be taking out that 0 0.75 joining allowance now. So I hope you're enjoying this tutorial so far. I hope you pick up something. And um, if you do, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And um, if you're yet to subscribe to my channel at this moment, I will advise you to do that so you join the community or join the family so you will not miss out on any other tutorial that I'm going to be dropping, okay? And stay tuned. Help me share this video as well. Please help me share this video. And yeah. So once I'm done now, we're going to head back to the cutting table here so that we can work on the, the bias and also the neckline. So the first thing I need to do, while I was cutting out the front uh, cutout, I told you that I made a mistake, but not a mistake. It's a personal preference, right? So I noticed that it was too lower. I want it exact at my hip line. So not exact, like 1.5 1, 1. inches uh a bit longer than my hip line so that is what i did so right now i'm marking uh 1.5 inch down okay so now i'm going to cut out the rest of it out so just watch and see what i'm doing so the part where i'm tracing out with my chalk i'm going to cut out this so that means from my hip line my from my shoulder to my hip line is 24 inches and then i added uh, 0. Uh, 1.5 inches so that is what I did from my shoulder to my hip line and then I added 1.5 inches. So yes, basically that is what I did. And the next thing I'm going to do now, I'm going to use my bias now to piping in the rough edges. Okay. So I'm going to use my bias to hem the rough edges round. So basically that is it for the front cut out. So once I'm done, the pin this is how it's looking like okay this is how it's looking like and then i'll go back and join it so and then the next thing that we're going to work on the neckline so i have um a long rectangle here like at this point now this is your personal preference so mine is 60 so i have 30 and 30 because i joined them together so i have the long rectangle here is by 60 okay and then the width I have here is 3.5. And then from here where you see me touching, I'm going to cut at 2.5 inches away from this part, okay? Because uh, I want the height of my band to be 2 inches at the end of the day. So I'm going to use 0 0.5 to join it back to my bodies. And then it's going to remain 2 inches. So, and then the next thing I will just trim out the parts where, this part where you see me marking off, okay? So, and also I have gone ahead to uh, seal in the, the edges, the parts that I, I don't need to join to the bodies. Okay, so the, the total width that remain here is about 16 inches. Okay, so I'm going to get my bodies now. And uh, so this is how the bias is. As I use the bias to pipe in the front. So this is how it's looking like. So... This is what you're going to get if you use bias. So the next thing I'm going to get my van and I'll place the right side of the center front, okay? The part where I join now is automatically become the midpoint for me. So I'll just use that one as a guideline. And then I'm going to pin round the neckline from the center front to the back center front, okay? So now that I'm done join pinning, I will go back to my sewing machine and join the the band or the collar to my dress yeah that is what I'm going to do so I have done join it so this is how it's looking like I have done join this 
and the next thing i will do i will go and weave these rough edges and then also i have gone ahead to weave the rough edges of my band and also no the sleeve sorry i weave the sleeves also the the side so the next thing i'm just going to iron it in place like fold in like about one inch or 1.5 inch it depends the allowance that you added when you were drafting you're going to cut out your sleeves okay so i'm using a 1.5 inches here because when i used the the length i used for my sleeve was too long i tested it was too long so i'm using one uh, 1.5 inch allowance here to fold in the the hemming or my sleeve uh, hem okay i hope you understand this so basically that is the end of this tutorial and i'm hemming my the bottom part of my dress and that is it so that is the end of this tutorial i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you learned something from this video if you do please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you're yet to do so and help me share this video as well thank you so much for watching i will see you on my next swing tutorial bye